So let's start creating a product release plan, uh, which essentially is a much more formal way of approaching release. Now this may or not may may or may not be as required in uh, your company because that depends on the scale of the products, depends on uh, the scale of your company. But effectively, whether you you have a formal process or not, but all these elements are required whenever you're releasing something you may not have a formal document which jots down a release plan but you will still go through all of these elements whether it's a small release or a big release so let's go through it in this particular unit we're going to lesson we're going to talk about strategic planning and product positioning so when you're preparing for product release these are the six steps that you have to go through you start with strategic planning typically this has this strategic planning has already started when you designed your sprint or your release or your epic then you look at your product messaging and positioning which will be borrowed from the strategic planning that you have done then you'll figure out how to do content creation and distribution then you'll look figure out how to ensure strong adoption and strong retention then you will figure out how to measure the adoption and intention that is happening and then finally any kind of risk mitigation let's go through each one of them one by one in this lesson we'll cover the first two steps so strategic pla uh, planning strategic planning is done at a very high level it's a cross-functional activity where you're where you work with the marketing team the engineering team the sales the operations the finance and everybody else to figure out and design how exactly the product should be released you would want the marketing team to be completely aligned you want you would want the sales team to be completely aligned you would if your product also requires a lot of operations then you would also want your operations team team to be completely in sync which is the release cycle they should have the bandwidth to manage the operations when you actually release the product and similarly the engineering team should also be ready pro uh, to be able to manage any kind of bugs or any kind of last minute issues that can come up typically the end product or the end result of this discussions take the form of a timeline based roadmap which is also called a gantt chart you can use normal excel sheets or you can use more sophisticated products like uh, product plan or aha or any of any one of these typically excel sheets are uh, considered the norm because they're easy to share and you can print them out and you can just place them on a whiteboard that's one thing i strongly recommend to keep a whiteboard especially when your major releases in line then create a plan put it on a whiteboard and in a clear sight so that it's visible to everybody and they can immediately know that where do we stand right now next comes product positioning and messaging now this is more to do with story creation and how do you create a strong story which people can resonate with if you have done your other job well which is user persona uh, doing user research understanding their pain points knowing what they are looking for then doing this should not be that big a problem because a good chunk of your story a good chunk of your product messaging would come from the interviews that have you have already done so if a user has already said that it's a pain to do expense tracking i don't like to do expense tracking that automatically tells you that the messaging should have these terms that expense tracking is a pain we know and we have fixed it that becomes your product messaging so this is very very crucial in how your product is viewed by your customers and if you do a good job at this you're sorted if you have not done it then this could be a good time when the last release is being planned and being figured out it's a good it's a good time to actually just go out and talk to few customers talk to few uh, users or at least go to your competitors uh apps app or website and see their reviews what people are talking about them and those keywords that the user are use users are using become should be 
should be featuring in your product messaging or in the final communication because that is what your users use and they will be able to relate and uh, connect with those terms another important aspect is that try to keep your messaging as simple as possible i can understand that when you have one worked so hard it is so easy to um, it is so easy to um, bombard the user with we have this feature we have that feature we have 10001 features but the user is not interested in all of them in fact he will lose track after three or maybe seven of them so it's important to keep it contained just keep top three features that you believe are going to connect with the with the users the most followed by any all the additional on a separate page or a separate or slightly hidden so that only those people who are seriously interested in your product would end up learning and reading more about the product end to end for instance when iphone was launched there were so many features to talk about right at the app level to the to the product level there were so many features to talk about but in the end if you just refer back the presentation uh, that steve jobs used there were just three or four high level features that he spoke about just three or four the landscape to portrait was an important delight for instance right and similarly you have to come up with those single one or two features which people will remember what are the elements of a good product message an element uh, so some important aspects of a good product message would be for example target market that your product message should include a target market should include customer pain points like i was just saying that your user would have already used those terms if you can include that in your customer uh, in your message then the customers will be much more able to connect with your message how is the product solving their pain point what are the benefits of the product and how is the product different from that of the competition you can include all of this or you can include couple of these but at least include two or three in any message let me take you through some examples so let's look at uber as an example so uber says tap the app get a ride that's a pretty straightforward simple proposition that yeah you just need to push a button and you'll get a ride absolutely straightforward and if you look at this uber is the smartest way to get around one tap and a car comes directly to you your driver knows exactly where to go and payment is completely cashless right so without pointing out the demerits of using regular taxis uber has very smartly communicated all the disadvantages of a traditional taxi service and how uber comes at top right so this message not only shows the customer the value uber provides but also resonates with the user's pain points it's a pain to carry cash it's a pain to find the taxi it's a pain to explain the driver where to go and what direction to take and so on and this is a powerful message it's a powerful um, example of how a good product message is crafted there's a title and just in two or three lines Uber has explained everything that uh, that matters to a user. Let's talk about another example, which is Slack. Right? Just look at the massive header here: a messaging app for teams who put robots on Mars. Now that's a powerful validation, right? So by using a reference to NASA, Slack has been able to put across its product message very effi very efficiently. Right. It also uh, it, and has been able to very effectively communicate that uh, trust us. We are credible because the same people who have put robots on Mars use us. So even even though I have not told you a bit about how we are different or whatever, but trust us, we are good. Right. And another subtle message that comes through is that a complex and Herculean task as putting robots on Mars can be made simpler through Slack. 
right? And then just if you just look below, all your tools in one place. Connect all the tools you use to Slack and avoid all that constant switching between apps. Set up your so you can imagine that this switch constant switching between apps must be a pain point which users would have highlighted. And Slack is using exactly that in the communication message. Set up your integration so that you get all your notifications directly within Slack. From support requests, code check-ins, and error logs to sales leads. That also indicates that a good chunk of their users are actually developers. Because that is why support requests, code check-ins, etc. Are, are an important aspect and it's, it has, they have been highlighted right here. Let's talk about another example. Uh, sorry, there's a mistake here. Example of iPhone. Uh, it has been, it is. So, if you look at the Apple message here, why there's nothing quite like iPhone? And then the subcopy, which is every iPhone we have made, and we mean every single one, was built on the same belief that a phone should be more than a collection of features. That above all, a phone should be absolutely simple, beautiful, and magical to use. Right? So the copy is em embodying a experience. It's not talking about phone at all. They're talking about a larger than life experience. Right? And Apple has always sold the Apple experience. Their iconic ad of 1984 just said, Why will 1984 will be not 1984? Something around that. Because the Apple has always sold the Apple experience, and that exactly is the messaging that they have put across. So instead of pointing out a sing or singling out a particular feature, they talk about how a phone is more than just a collection of features. Right? They're saying that entirely the entire cohesive experience of Apple is going to be far super superior to any other phone that exists. So to conclude. Strategic planning and product positioning is pretty much the starting point of your entire release plan. And they are grounded or anchored in the initial product thesis that you might have created for your release plan, for your sprint plan, and for everything else. So if you have done your initial work properly, then these two steps should be a cakewalk. But if you have not done it earlier, then do it right now. And you might have to do it very well right now because you have not done it earlier and product is already built. So you might have to tweak your product positioning also because maybe what all you planned earlier were not completely done by the end of the entire sprint. And so you might have to ship with uh, certain features missing. So you might have to change the product positioning. Whatever it be, it's important to make sure that product positioning is uh, uh, and the communication that you're putting across is very very simple to understand it can be explained in one title and couple of additional support lines that's it that's it for now thank you